Good morning. morning. Welcome for this worship Sunday. I'm Pastor Mami. I'm the associate pastor here. Today we still remember Pastor Jolene, who is on a new treatment, and uh, we ask God to bless the medicine and the hands of the doctors who is taking care of her. And she'll be with us as soon as she can. We have two deaths in the congregation. Yesterday was uh, John, Joan Bash died, and uh, probably funeral is this weekend. So we pray for the family. Also, the death of Rick, who is Roxanne Bravas, and uh, plan for funeral as well for this week. And the burial of Ellie, a Swenson, uh, Mother of uh, Eileen, she's in California, but uh, they are member here. And the burial will be at the cemetery on Sunday afternoon. This past week, we also have the hurricane, a land that really devastated the Florida area, North Carolina, Antenna, uh, Georgia. So we pray for them as well. Let us center ourselves with the presence of God and of one another. Loving and merciful God, we come to you this morning. Remember Pastor Jolen, we ask you, Lord, to bless the medicine that she is taking. Bless the hands of doctors and everyone taking care of her and the family be with them in this time. And we pray that she'll come back soon to do your work here. We also pray for the family of Joanne, who is now at rest with you. We pray for Bob, for Marie Jo, and uh, all of them in this time of separation. We remember Roxanne, for the death of her brother Rick, give peace to the whole family as well. And also pray for Aileen, for the upcoming burial of her mother. Thank you for the long life she had, 100 years old. And we come to you with heavy heart as we continue to learn the Devastations caused by the Hurricane Helen. Lord, be with the family, those who have lost loved ones, lost homes and possessions. In this time, let us remember your love and remind us how we may be able to care for our siblings in Christ today and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Call to worship. Come, wrestle with God who receives us and welcomes us just as we are. Come, Come, look around with questions. Look around with wonder. Turning your head in every direction you can find. Come, Come, God calls us in a renewed relationship with one another. Come, Come. God invites us into new beginnings.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins. Whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are now. all within us cause conflict and dispute. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the mean and suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need. And turn us to follow the heavy way, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By the grace you have been saved, in the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are all forgiven. Amen. Let us sing the governing song.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Generous God, the Son of give his life, and may come to peace with you. Give us a share of your faith in all the room of God. The psalm for today is Psalm 19, verses 7 through 14. Please join me in the bold portions. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 9. Glory to you, Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus teaches the, his disciples about uh, ministry that involves service and sacrifices. So John said uh, to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. And we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, uh, do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because uh, you bear the name of Christ will be no means lose, lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to travel, cut it off. It is better for you to enter maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. 
and if your foot causes to trouble, stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter a lamb than to have two feet and uh, to be thrown into hell. And if your eyes cause you to stumble, tear it, out, tear it out, it is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell. Wherever the worms never dies and the fire is never quenched, for everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Children, come for water. All right, come on. Pastor Mommy, okay? It's easy, like you say, Mommy. Mommy. All right. And uh, thank you for coming to church today. Thank you for coming to the children's sermon, too. And do you have, uh, I have a question. Do you have pets at home? Who has pets? What do you have? A dog? Two cats? Two dogs, two cats, a hamster, what else? That's a lot. What about you? Two dogs, one cat, cats, okay, what else? Who has pets at home? Yeah? You don't have pets? Yeah. Some people have pets like... Uh, Rabbit, some people have pets like birds, some people have pets like fish. Those pets, you know, these are all part of God's creations, right? Yeah, so today, this, this, this week or next week, they are blessing the pets and, uh, in some church. We're not going to do that, but yeah. That's something the church does because it's, it's a compliment. It's a very... Very big things in your heart. And I want you to watch this little video, short one, and we talk about it. It's about God and about dog. Okay? Let's see if it's working. Look at it. I look up and I see God. I look down and see my dog simple spelling g-o-d same word backwards d-o-g they would stay with me all day i'm the one who walks away but both of them just wait for me and dance in my return Both love me no matter what, divine God and canine mutt. I take it hard each time I fail, but God forgives, dog wags his tail. God thought up and made the dog, dog reflects a part of God. I've seen love from both sides now, it's everywhere, amen, bow wow. Yeah. I look up and I see God, I look down and see my dog, and 
in my human frailty I can't match their love for me yeah that's a lovely one okay both dog and God loves us no matter what yeah so those are the creation of God. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for today. Remind us of your creations and our pets that were created with us to give us a joy, to give us hope, to, be, to reflect your love in this world. Bless the children who come to church and their family and those who are not here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you for coming. Bless all of you today. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, on the gospel text at the end, it says, Jesus said, be at peace with one another. Be at peace with one another. That's a powerful message for all of us from Jesus' time to us today and even for the future generations. Be at peace with one another. The reality of life today is that uh, our communities and the world are getting more diverse, pluralistic, and more complex uh, due to various factors which means that we are likely to meet or to get to know a person of different faith or a person who claim to have no faith at all, not believing in God in the workplaces or at school or even in our neighbor or everywhere. When we were learning English in Australia, we stayed in a Lutheran guest house and, uh, in Adelaide, South, South Australia. And uh, there is this little boy who is uh, our neighbor. And he came and played with uh, my daughters. He was nine, that time he was nine years old. And uh, I had one day, I had a conversation with him. And he asked me about my work. And what do you do in life? Uh, I said, uh, we are missionaries. We're going to Papua New Guinea. And he replied sarcastically, oh, you are one of the people who does God's thing, huh? And uh, then he said, I don't believe in God. I was like, jeez, <laughs> nine years old in front of me saying, I don't believe in God. And he said, it's only for the weak-minded people. Oh, I, I, I really have, I don't know what to say I, uh, in this little boy. And uh, 
So many things ran through my head. I'm going to, what I'm going to say to this? Uh, yeah. I was quiet for a moment and uh, trying to respond to him with love. So I simply said, uh, where did you learn that thing? And he said, well, we are all thinking the same way in, my, in our home, the whole family. Ah, okay, I said. I respect your view, you know. That's fine with me. And then he was saying, can I come to play with your kids again? And I said, yeah, of course, come. Come tomorrow, next day, whenever you are free, come. We are here. And he was puzzled and he said, you know, most people here, the guest house, this Lutheran guest house, once they know that we don't believe in God, they are not allow their children to be playing with us again. Because we don't believe in God. I just smiled at him and told him that you are a nice young man and you have a lot to learn in life. So yes, you may see those people who claim no faith in God. You may going to see them, if not already seeing them. But remember today, the theme of the sermon is be at peace with one another. That's a Christian responsibility to those who believe differently. Jesus is challenging us to be at peace with those who name God differently. Jesus is saying to us, be at peace to those who are not able to name God at all. Jesus is calling us to understand them, love them, and in all these ways, be at peace with one another. Remember when uh, the Pope Francis was in the States uh, in 2015, so many tears were shed. So many people, so many great gave, uh, got hopes, you know, high. And, but I was saying, the Pope is not Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He's just a follower of Jesus as a Jesuit monk. But he's a humble man. And he promised to many that he's praying for them and ask people to remember him in their prayer as well. During his installation as a pope, there was a special place for pope with golden chair and all of that. He, he didn't sit there, he chose another chair in the lower place to sit. During his installation, when uh, the pope has to confess, they have a special place to confess to God with no one else but this Pope Francis, he went to the priest and confessed with the priest. That's how, how humble he was. He is. So when he was here, he gave a speech at the UN staff. And he closed his speech saying, and if any of you are not a believer, I ask me, I ask you, to wish me well. If any of you are not a believer, I ask you to wish me well. That's the kind of the way of life that Jesus is telling us in this gospel text today, to be at peace with one another. Even among us Christians, I mean by... Uh, follow of Christ. We have different backgrounds. We have different points of view on every issues. For us to live in peace with each other is to find a way to express our belief in all the fullness while listening and striving to understand those of another rather than criticizing one another over differences in practices. 
Look at the disciple of Jesus in this text today. Notice the tone and the mood of the disciples. Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. And we tried to stop him because he was not following us. Yes, that's not only a complaint, but uh, it's also an accusation. The disciples want Jesus to affirm the judgment and action against this other follower because he was not playing by the rules of following the lead. The disciples wanted the Jesus uh, to put a stop to someone casting out demons in the, his name because he was not one of them. So this passage is really, you know, revealing to us our human tendency to fear those who are different from us. That's a human tendency, isn't it? We are so very prone to draw a line between who are in and who are out. Sometimes we do it by gender. Even today, in many countries, including the Lutheran Church in my home country in Madagascar, they only ordain men and not women. But I believe it will come one day. Sometimes we do it by age. Oh, you are too old. Oh, you're too young. Or sometimes by sexual orientations, or by ethnicities, or by income level, we draw a line. And the worst part is sometimes we do it by the religion. I remember this uh, professor emeritus at uh, Watberg Seminary, Professor Duan Priby. Ah. He reminds us every time, every time you draw a line between who is in and who is out, he said, you will find Jesus on the other side. So you, if you try to draw a line and you put some people out, Jesus is not with you there. Jesus is out there. I cherish that uh, teaching statement every day. You know, gospel text today, Jesus told his disciples not to stop someone who is doing good, even they are not member of their group. And we are taking that message as well. We are not to interfere, nor to refuse help for someone even if we don't know whether they believe or not. We are not to place the stumbling blocks in the way of anyone who is in need or vulnerable because their beliefs are different from ours. People of God at Savior Lutheran Church, we are called to confess Jesus Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. And part of that confession is I believe is to love our neighbors in the world. Indeed, no matter what they may confess. And as Christians and followers of Christ, we share God's love through our life and through our works. Remember, we have a God that came down for, for us. And we don't have to go up somewhere to meet God. Jesus lives in us, and God promises forgiveness of sins, new life, everlasting life, as we receive and partake the Holy Communion. So yes, we are a follower of Jesus Christ, and we get it wrong when we follow someone over than Jesus Christ, even if that person 
tells us that to follow them is to follow Jesus Christ. No, we are not following anybody. We are following Jesus Christ. We also get it wrong when we assume that all who follow Jesus Christ will follow Jesus Christ as we do. Peter, James, John, they were fishermen. Matthew was a tax collector. Paul was a religious uh, uh, professional who opposed everything Christian. Each one encounters Jesus Christ and become a disciples in a unique way. Paul never said uh, that the only way to meet Christ is to be knocked down by a flashing light from heaven on the road to Damascus. No, he didn't say that. But everyone is called in a different way. We are not to say, my way is the way to the way. As being baptized in the name of our Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we are all beloved sons and daughters of God. And Jesus reminds us today, be at peace with one another. Let us sing the hymn of the day. It's a French song, so I hope you, you know it. Let us uh, confess uh, our faith with the Sister Church United Christ of Canada Creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God. 
was created in its greatness, was come in Jesus Christ, and made flesh, to reconcile and make new, walk in us and ours by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live in respect and creation, to love and serve others. Seek justice and resist evil. To proclaim Jesus crucified and buried. A judge in our hope. In life, in death, and life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Now is the blessing for the farmers. Uh, please, if you're a farmer, please rise up so you can see. Any farmers here? <laughs> They're all farmers here. All right. There is a, the, let's see what's, what equipment they're using. And then, uh, then, thank you, thank you, farmers. And yeah, just pass them through and look at that big truck. And how they are working in that. I would like to drive something like that too. <laughs> Might not be easy. <laughs> Automatics. Okay. You just sit there and then. Okay. But you have to do something, right? Yeah, those are big, big instruments for farmers. New Holland. Okay, I know you know. You are the farmer. All right. Uh, I have a very short Bible verse that I want to share with you. It's in Ecclesiastes, verse, chapter 3, verse 2. One and two. For everything there is a season, a time for everything matter under heaven, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted. In the Bible, there is a, even a psalm talking about how God cares for farmers. And uh, let us pray for them. Loving and merciful God, we thank you for the creation that you created for us. Thank you for the farmers and everyone who is taking care of the land, the animals and everything. Bless them in their work, the crops. And uh, we pray for good rain, good sunshine, good wind, that have a plenty of harvest and uh, to be able to glorify you and to trust you in every time with their decisions. Bless them every one of them, today and forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. The responses for the petitions today will be your mercy is great. We pray for the people of God in all places. Shape our witness to the good news of Jesus that we joyfully share your transforming love with all whom we encounter. We pray for churches throughout the world. We pray for the people of the Ukraine. We pray for the people of the Middle East, Sudan, 
areas of the world that, that need us desperately. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for the healing of the earth. Renew oceans and seas, marshes and estuaries. Uphold the work of conservationists, oceanographers, and all who care for fragile ecosystems and habitats. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for peace and cooperation among local and global communities. Bless the efforts of community organizers, international aid workers, and all those who work for justice and peace around the world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For, we pray for all who are in any need, to all who grieve, for families who have lost loved ones, families who have lost homes from hurricane damage. Bring consolation to all who are weary or lonely. Bring solace. By your grace, make your presence known among all who call to you for healing, especially Dick, Steve, Danette, Nevin, Jim, Amy, Judy, Kim, Susan, Tim, Clara, Laura, Lyndon, Linda, Shannon, Bill, Claire, Camden, Ron, Maxine, Donna, Anita, Connie, Jim, Roy, Elaine, Lorraine, Rhoda, Bev, Wilma, Judy, Darlene, Barb, Marilyn, Larry, Will, those serving in the military, Cole, Christopher, Tyler, and a special prayer for Pastor Jolene as she recovers. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for caregivers, doctors and nurses, home health aides and counselors, and those who care for loved ones. Sustain them in their work and help us to build a health care system that supports all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for the saints who now rest in your eternal presence. In thanksgiving for their lives of faithful service and witness, we commend them to your loving care. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. with one another. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Take a moment to share a moment with your friends here. Take a moment, if you could, to uh, read through the bulletin and, uh, and check into announcements that pertain to you. Uh, there are all sorts of opportunities to uh, connect with people in this church. Prayer groups, uh, women's groups, men's groups, bells, uh, a choir, um, interesting and fun people to meet. Um, there's a concert next week that I'd like to call out. Um, there's a cello player, uh, Mark Sander, 
and he's going to uh, uh, share his time with uh, Elliot Grandall in a special concert next Sunday afternoon. And uh, they will sing Broadway tunes, classic songs, and patriotic standards. Two talented gentlemen, really. Uh, free will offering will be taken with proceeds going to the food shelves in Spring Valley and Wyckoff. Um, you can read through some of the other things that are going on. Um, uh, I have a, a microphone and an announcement. Uh, tomorrow I will be married to my loving wife for 35 years, and she is a gem, and I love her. I just want you to know that, dear. One, one more thing, uh, go Vikings. pray, blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By this gift of which we are alive, help us to Jesus Christ, our Savior. We're going to sing the, responsibly, the hymn. 483 for the communion.
one but the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. They will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of the bread. And forgive us as we forgive us. And lead us not to temptation. But deliver us from the Why kingdom before the glory forever? Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God.
May the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal. Receive the blessings. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Now you can come, children, come, date your instrument, and you can play with us. Come on. Here is your staff. Jesus.